That's what bit him in the butt this time. Let's see what they do. They've been focusing on banning out specific members so far. As we yeah. get ready, takes down the first timer. There's the Draven Same ban band. once again. Nidalee also, so no changes just yet. H2K doesn't need to change anything. You can ban Draven, ban the Cassiopeia, and then you got the last one, which has been Urgard uh, for the last few games. They can even change that one if they want to, unless they know the Covenant Wolves have a specific strategy or, or really are afraid of it. But the Wolves here, you ban Zed and you ban LeBlanc against Ryu. He picked Diana and he had a fantastic performance in, in the fights on it. It looks like they're doing the same. Maybe trying to tell H2K, if you first pick Ari, we are going to get potential Giacomo, even though it didn't work in game one. Uh, Hecarim for Youngbuck was good in the early game. But then in the late game, in the team fights, the teleport synergy wasn't there with the team. We never saw him assassinate someone in the back line. That was a big problem for the Wolves that didn't play around the Hecarim properly. So uh, we will not see the Urgot again. No. Uh, H2K sticks to the same strategy. It's won them two games in a row, or at least yeah, why that, change? that's a part of it. Has there been anything that you are afraid of from the Copenhagen Wolves so far? No. You can take Ari first pick if you want it, unless you value the Mauka higher. Yeah. And even if you give Ari over to Copenhagen Wolves, well, you can do the same mid lane matchup as before with the Diana, and that's fine as well, as long as you don't play as aggressive around the mid lane, like we saw Lulix try and do and get punished for it. Mm -hmm. The Lulu ban will okay. be the next one. Eliminates the possibility of the Juggermaw for H2K. I wouldn't think the Wolves would try to go back to that one either. No, no, no. So it makes perfect sense in this situation. Yeah, I mean, sure, they could potentially get it because H2K has shown they don't really care about the Wolves picking it. But it's just, it's not the playstyle you want to use if you are to beat H2K. Go back to early, aggressive lanes where you can do well in early to mid game. But this time around, don't make the same mistakes in terms of items and in terms of objective objectives you're looking at. Because that was really the problem for the Wolves when they just failed to control the map, honestly. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that really was a tale of it. So once again, we will see the Maokai locked for Odawamne. Seven and zero on it now. Mm -hmm. And counting. And counting, I mean. It's going to be his eighth game on it now. So Ari is open if they want it in the mid lane. It was a good pick for Soren beforehand or in the last game. Sichuani in the jungle. I would love to see that for Airwax. Kragas has been fairly contested across yeah, the goal, but that one. Time. In, yeah, it did. I mean, Sichuani after the changes is still fantastic, because even if you miss your ulti, you just permafrost after, and you still get that slow onto targets, or at least a big slow. I do not want to see a Nara unless we're going to have some sort of spit pushing focus from the Wolves, but Nara is so hard to play around these days. With they were the, just with messing around a bit. Yeah, that's, that's the Ari and the Annie, so they're definitely still looking for that. A little bit of razzle dazzle they had sure. last time. These two picks it's, work. It's gonna come down to execution. This is the thing. Yeah. They can pull off those combos and then safely push and back away and not give up anything to H2K. Then they can make it work. They can pick exactly the same comp as last game and it will still be fine because it was a good comp they picked. They played around it so nicely until we hit like 30 minutes and it just stopped from the Copenhagen Wall. So you got unlimited on his engage Annie again. We have Ari for Soren, which was a good pickup. Diana is open for Ryu if he wants it. Or he can take Zed as well. I mean, both of them are skill matchups. Zed obviously has a bit more kill pressure than a Diana in the laning phase. A bit more, a lot more. But uh, Sijuani is open. We saw game one from, uh, from Lulex. I don't see why you wouldn't pick it here unless you want the Gragas. But for me, Sijuani is still the top, top pick of the tanks. I think it makes perfect sense. And this is kind of going back to H2K's composition from game number one which was, you know, a much bigger game in their favor much earlier on. So the only thing that's missing from it so far is, of course, the Ari and the Jinx. Now, they can't pick up the Ari. They can still get the Jinx for Yarnin. But the Wolves have to find an answer for this. There's already, again, a massive front line for them to have to wear through. And Ryu has shown that he can put on his carry pants pretty big, too, with that Diana last yeah. game. I would go Kalista again here, like the co-branding Wolves are doing, and try and force the 2-2 two two laning phase which was so heavily dominated by them. Freeze and Unlimited has really been one of the two best uh, dual lanes we had, or some of the best dual lanes we had here in Europe. Obviously, Forgiven and Rated mm -hmm. up there is probably the number one. Ah, okay. Got a Vi, okay. Changing up a little bit. In case Janin goes for the same immobile hyper carry style, you have even more dive on potential here. Point and click CC from the Vi. Morgana is open, however, but that would have to go mid lane. Also, 
which pretty, I mean, pretty much mid lane. He's yeah. not been a real champion this yeah. split. He's I, been I feel like a lot more focused on assassin. In that chain of events, they felt safe because the threat had already been picked. Yeah, exactly. They see the top lane, okay, that's locked in as Maokai. They see the support, okay, that's lo locked in as Thresh. And we know Ryu plays Assassins, so they're obviously not expecting a Morgana to come in and try and nullify that by. See what they do go with. Uh, the Zillion's been you a little Diana tedious. here again. You got I a fantastic comp. In. You, yeah. you got a great comp to dive onto Copenhagen Walls. If you go Diana Sevier, you have so much engage, and Kalista is gonna get locked down in the fights every single time. Ah. Looks like Zed though from Ryu. Flirted with this a little bit too. So Ryu hasn't had that much success on Zed here in Europe. He's had one game on it. This split didn't result in a win, but. I feel like in this particular case, they have a lot of options now. Uh, a heavy amount of AD, though. That is true. Two damage dealers, but obviously Sejuani with the magic damage and Maokai, I think it's okay for H2K, especially because there's no big tank on Copenhagen. I'm also really going to stack an absolutely insane amount of armor. We know Vi is going to go for, for Randu and, and, and so on, but they should be able to deal with that on its own. Ari is only going to go for Hourglass. Hecarim. Seems to be the option for Yombo in terms of summoner spells again, which is a good pickup. I mean, you have a fantastic compi on diving onto H2K. You can now have two tanks as well stacking armor, which would be great against the Zed, against the Sivir, to be strong in the late game. I would much prefer that over the Vladimir. Yeah, I think uh, the Wolves prefer it too. So they do take the lock-in. It's going top once again. I would expect we'd probably have standard lanes another time, but... The Wolves have to vary things up a little bit. It's it's not their game plan that's been the problem. It's been the execution. Yeah, same setup. They can still win the laning phase. Zed into Ari is very much a skill matchup for them. Pre-6, Zed can land some pretty good arrest on to, to Ari. He has the shadow really to kind of dictate the laning phase. But after 6, with the arm guard and the blue buff for Ari, the lane kind of swaps around and becomes pretty tough for you here. But very much a skill matchup. A lot of uh, different mid laners seem to disagree disagree with each other and who's going to win the lane here. But that doesn't matter. The point is, you got the Kalista Annie for Copenhagen Wars again. You got the Hecarim into Maokai. Lane Jumbuck won in the last game. At least he got a kill. The farm was very even between them. So Wolves can do the same. Problem is, they're still going to get in that situation where they got to be able to close the game. And that went so horribly wrong for them in the last game. Yeah, that's always the question mark as the coaches walk off stage. It could be for the final time today. Maybe the Wolves can bring it back. At this point, H2K, they are definitely in a solid position. But what do you guys at home think? Can they close this one out, or will the Wolves start their comeback here? Tweet us at LLE Sports with H2K win or CW win. And I hope you guys are as hyped at home as we are here. We're loading onto the rift. It is game three of H2K versus the Copenhagen Wolves here in this quarterfinal match. I'm kind of surprised Ryu went with the Zed. Honestly, I would have preferred Diana. As you mentioned, you don't have two damage dealers then being physical. You have fantastic dive potential. And late game Diana is going to do a lot more than a Zed in a team fight mm -hmm. as well. As long as you just didn't have Lulex try and force fights around the mid lane in the early game, you would have been fine. But clearly, H2K won a bit more early pressure with the Zed. For real. We're sending a lot of members up top here. I feel like they can take a lot of risks right now, even silly risks, because they're two games up. Worst thing that happens, they lose a game here and then they, they get a little bit more serious. They can take risks and, and test the waters of the Copenhagen Wolves. So they're actually going for an invade here, going to be seen in the tri brush. And Young Buck will hightail it back. Unlimited now is going to throw down a couple of wards himself, though. Or is he? Never mind. He will, he will. He's gonna take a minute. There he goes. Just waiting to make sure he has the proper time. Freeze can go and ward between the two towers down here on the bottom side as well. To see if any crazy movements are gonna happen from H2K. Wolves again he looking for standard so. lanes. They got the Dornus Blade Hecarim for the top lane, one-on-one -on -one against the Maokai. We know the Kalista Annie lane is strong for Wolves. Seems like they're the ones swapping. I'm not sure if they're expecting H2K to be on the top side because they haven't seen anything. And they saw a fairly late ward being placed. So the Wolves will catch H2K on this top side. That's a very nice swap, unless Unlimited shows himself on this ward. He does now. So H2K know what's going on. And look at Odo Amne. 
Suddenly moving towards the top side. Now teleporting bottom lane. Oh, they now just get here. Now there he's in the back. Okay. So, this is a little bit of a different take on the jungle buddy. Really more the AD carry and support doing the gromp as Lulex was taking out the blue to start this one off. Freezer Unlimited will be met head on by Hyarnan and Kasing to begin the lane phase. So the double lane swap is completed. We lost quite some minions though here from doing the camp, so we won't get to see. Well, Covering Wolves should honestly be able to get the first level two. Wants to kill one more melee minion if I counted it correctly. There we go. And can now start putting pressure on H2K, which then responds, or oh, who will respond with him? Own level two. So even in the lane here, to increase some limit. That was really the bad thing for H2K in the last game. They lost the race for, for level two. And then simply got zoned out completely. Jan and recalled to base at like two minutes and 50 seconds. But, but all that pressure ended up not amounting to enough. So, I mean, it, it just seems like the Wolves can have as good of a landing phase as they'd like. They, they really need to execute in other areas. Well, sure, but happens. you still need to get that lead. That's true. They, it, I mean, it, it's, that's it's step not one. even a chance if you don't get that. So, here it's obviously a lot more even to start things off. Also, Sivir has a, a much better landing phase than Kog'Maw, I'd wager to say. Yeah, that's safe to say. Sivir also has the luxury that in case she's losing a lane, she can always just put focus on trying to push out the waves as fast as possible and then kind of back away, not really aim for too many trades with her great wave there. So this bottom lane here, despite Yomba getting that kill one-on-one -on -one against Odoamna, I don't think it's heavily in favor of Hecarim in one-on-one -on -one between the two laners here. We will see a lot of damage on Yana. I mean, this is going to be the same deal now. Freeze and Unlimited will take over, but the bottom lane, or the top lane, between Maoka and Hecarim, because Hecarim is spamming so much, Maoka is passive procs very often. He's sustaining really well in this one-on-one. -on -one. Therefore, he shouldn't be able to die to the Hecarim and should be just a bit of a farm phase at the moment. And then you can focus ganks instead on the Hecarim, who's not running flash. If he's caught middle, middle of the lane, you snare him point and click from the Maokai, and that should be enough to allow Lulix to come in. Now what I'm really interested in is where Arawax decides to go. Because you see that the Wolves, bottom lane and the top, have already started to push back Kjarnan and Kasing. The mid lane is going to be very, very hard to lock up Soren, even if you execute the Assault and Battery. Still, he could have dashed within tower range and puts yourself in a dangerous situation. There's not so many targets that you're able to safely lock down with this spot. Look at H2K, recalling from the top lane. Already quite a CS late for Freeze. It's the same deal as the last game. That's why the Wolves swap top here, expecting H2K to go for the lane drop themselves. And they're now going to turn it around. Lulex is starting the Dragon. Airworks is not even close to stopping it. This is even with Odo I'm the recalling. This dragon should never be allowed from Copenhagen Walls. Odo Amna is recalled, so he's not on the bottom side. And Lulex is so low, but there's zero wards on this side. And Airwax is not expecting it. Now he realizes the dragon. Oh! I mean... Too late. This is the second time in this series where H2K gets a free early dragon. And there's no response from Walls before it's way too late. That should never be allowed. When your top lane is recalling from, from the bottom lane to go top lane and your dual lane is running from base, you're basically only two guys on the map who can fight for that dragon against the Hecarim, Avai, and Ari. I mean, how are you getting that dragon? Yeah, a little oversight from Copenhagen Wolves. Or lack of sight. And they give up dragon number one. About five and a half, 545 into the game. H2K take their place back in the bottom, but Freeze and Unlimited are already there. Still, having too much trouble. They are down on CS, but they're still grabbing some back. It's kind of hard to deny a Sivir. Yeah, that's the thing. As we see now, what Janin is doing is saying, I don't want to trade. I'm just going to push the waves as fast as I possibly can, so I'll try and keep even in CS, and I make sure my tower is healthy. That's all he's trying to do in this lane, and then you can start setting up ganks instead. You got the lantern. Once you get level 6 with the Sivir ulti, you have a good setup for Lulex to come down or Odo Amin to TP in. But before that, you're just aiming to farm mainly. Nothing else. The Wolves instead want to make a play on the top side. It is going to be spotted by this ward here, but can they get onto Odo Amin? He's caught pretty far up. Yeah, he's already burning. Airwax and Soren are there. I don't see him getting out of this situation, but let's see what he can do. Not much. 
That's first blood. Seven minutes in, and it goes over to Soren. He will return some damage on the mid lane, but I still think that was a good enough trade from the Copenhagen Wolves that pushed away and then just walked up, secured that one kill. Might even force a teleport from Odu Amne. So nice little roam, and we see again from the Wolves, they know they have to make plays early on. They know they have to create a large goal lead to win the game. So they have to take the chances and go for these plays here. Mm -hmm. See what they can get going here on the bottom side. Yarnin took the Dark Passage out as the wave resets. Airwax in the H2K jungle grabs himself a blue buff. Now Lulex is doing the same on the opposite side. Ryu helping out with that much. Should go over to him. He will get and it. there it goes. That denies it from Soren because the blue buff was taken by Airwax himself, as you mentioned before, and it wasn't given over to Soren. And now, four guys on this bottom side. Prep for the dive. The hook is not going to connect, but. Freeze, he's getting chunked down. The death mark was on him, but Lulex already melted. They trade jungler for AD carry as Youngbug looks to continue the fight in a number disadvantage. He's gonna back away. Youngbug TP down again, fairly late. He had no ulti. That just leaves Odo Amne to do whatever he wants on the top side here. So TP blown from the wolves, not getting anything. And meanwhile, a kill for Ryu on the Z. Nice little return kill from uh, Freeze. Not sure what his flash was about. Let me see if he was dodging anything. I also want to see what Soren is building. Typically, you see like Codex into Arm Guard, otherwise, you can see like Full Morel Nomicon before he aims for Hourglass against the Zed in lane. There's a lot of different paths you can take. Yombak is returning to this top lane, but look how much he just lost minions, tower damage, and he gained nothing from teleporting to the bottom lane. Now, that is the issue. Didn't really get. Anything out of that, the teleport timing. Now there's a edge for Oda Wamne. Still a while before the next dragon does come up. But I feel like H2K are just making better decisions with what they have right now. Still a little bit behind in gold. That doesn't matter too much right now. And they do have the dragon to compensate for that. So Kiarnan will put some more back in his pocket with a whole lot of farm right up in front of him. Eric's going for Warrior and Shandon Bai. We have seen, especially in China and in Korea, a lot of the junglers still play Rek'Sai, Java, and so on, but go Cinderhold instead, and just become a tank, not as effective as the big tank like you know, Sichuani and a mass amount of CC, but you can follow somewhat and you still have that early pressure, but we're gonna see Warrior and Shan for, for Airwax. So he's really aiming to make plays here in the early game. He's gonna get onto Odo Amne. Yep, gets the jump on. But Odo Wamne is back safe within tower range. And not enough damage there. Meanwhile, Soren Deathmark's on him as he dashes forward. Ryu should be enough for lethal, and yes it is. He makes the outplay on Soren. And that's always the risk. And when you don't go for arm guards early, because you have zero defense. Aurel Nomicon was the first item for Soren. He's playing with fire, so is Kasing. E Kasing. Might just get burned, but it's Yarnin that actually gets stunned up as he throws a spell shield on a little bit late. Still gets the Dark Passage back. Really nice play. Ryu has shown up in this quarterfinal here. He's been fairly quiet during the regular season. It's not been about him in the mid lane, but in all three games, he's been making plays. Diana, Ari, Zed, it doesn't even matter. And of course, with Soren not investing into any defensive stats early on, Ryu saw his opportunity to dive in with the Cutlass and get that kill. So Soren getting punished quite a bit here. Losing even more farm. This mid tower as well is down now. First the roam where Ryu got damaged and then the one-on-one -on -one kill. Really not looking great for Copenhagen Wolves in this setup compared to the last one. Just think back on, on how far they were ahead in the last game and they didn't manage to win. Now it's even against a Zed who's just completed Blade at 11 minutes. And you still don't have anything to defend yourself on your Ari. I mean, Ryu is going to look for another fight against Soren. Yeah, there's nothing to really stop him in this situation from dueling out Soren. And it's going to be really difficult for the Wolves to try and come back from this one if they continue to get picked off. If they try to force a 5v5, there's always the threat of running into the massive tank line and, and a glacial prison. But even in individual situations, they're still in trouble. Look at that damage that Ryu was able to put out on Soren just from a shadow and a shuriken. He can, he can all in him now, easily. 
Even before he gets rank 2 of his ulti, he can go for the all-in on Soren. Got the blade active. He might just try and dive him here. Straight away. Wouldn't be too surprised though. Over Deception is going to clip him. He goes in to dodge the charm. Foxfire dodging left and right. He is going to take a tower shot, however. And Soren gets the better of him that time. Meanwhile, though, H2K are a little bit busy with the dragon and should be able to secure it. They have been controlling the bottom side ever since Jan and Kasing swapped down. And Ryu, of course, winning the mid lane. So hard. You can see the wards they have already placed in the jungle of Copenhagen Wolves, also allowing that dive to happen despite it not working out for Ryu. No flashes being blown. And Kasing is simply, and Kasing and Jan, sorry, has managed to keep up in farm despite falling behind early. This is the trick. And the thing about Sivir, I know why certain AD carries hate her so much because she's so hard to deny when she can just clear the waves so yeah. far. It's never going to, to become a hyper carry, but you don't need them when you've got this threat. We've already shown that Ryu can really step up in the clutch, and now Odo Wamne, can he get away from this one? Airwax is tanking tower shots, just moves out of range, but he has to flash to get outside of Odo Wamne's range. And Youngbug takes him down finally, but that was not the cleanest 2v1. It was not, but it was a kill for the Wolves, and they can take the tower as well. This is what they need. Go for some of these aggressive plays here. Yeah, you got nothing to lose. I mean, you're down 2-0 already in the series. Mm -hmm. If you don't win this game, you're out. So you have to try and go for some of these plays. Eric picks up this one. We'll get his warrior in China as well once he goes back. And meanwhile, H2K responding in the bottom lane. When you play bottom lane and your mid lane is losing, you are forced to just play super passive. Because you know if you ever push your lane up, there's such a high chance of the enemy jungler and the enemy mid laner roaming from the mid side down towards you on the bottom side, and you can't do anything to defend yourself. So it's simply meant for Copenhagen Wolves. Once they, they lost the mid lane, bottom lane suffered completely, because with Eric showing, showing himself on the top side, there's obviously no help down there, and HK know they can go for a 4v2 dive, like we saw before. And therefore, they had to give up this tower as well, picked up from picked up by Yana and Kasey. They can go look towards the top lane. Hecarim won't be able to clear the waves fast enough. There's no dragon alive. And that's the last out of third H2K need. And look, Pyra, we're getting close to the 15 minute mark. There is a certain pattern that repeats itself to Fischio with H2K. Last game notwithstanding. We'll see what they can do here. Young Buck and Airwax chasing down on but they don't know Lulex and Ryu were there. They certainly do now, as Ryu takes a lot of damage as he moves back. The Glacial Prison, they're under tower range, but it doesn't matter. Two quick kills for H2K, as Unlimited comes in far too late to make an impact. Yeah, last out of turret going down now. Yannin returning to the bottom end to defend from Freeze. Such a nice setup again here from H2K, aiming for that last out of turret. And Airwax here should never have even been close you know H2K is going for the last one. There's nothing else on the map to get. Mid and bot lane are already dead. Dragon is gone. Top lane was the only tower left. You know they're coming for it. Don't put yourself in a situation where you can get caught out like that. The Wolves trying to find an answer. Revenge kill maybe on Garden would be the one for them as they dash in. Soren is going to prompt the on the hunt spell shield, the charm, and then flashing away. But this time Ryu's here. And so is Odawamne. This could be some serious trouble for the Wolves. They're going to use their heal, but in comes Odawamne. And the twist in advance, Soren gets blown up. And Freeze still trying to kite his way back. But in comes Kasing, zones him out, and they take him down. Another kill to Hjarnin. A kill to Hjarnin. Yeah, the Wolves trying to make some plays. The time is running out, and H2K really turning on the power. This Z pickup. We talk about how Diana for like the overall comp in terms of the late game would have been better for H2K, but Zed is just doing so much work because Ryo is winning that mid lane matchup. He's been involved in every one of these kills. Yeah. Too. He's all over the map and he looks like he's going to be in for some more. Youngbuck is going down. It's just a matter of time. Odo Wamne tanks up even more damage as Ryu picks up a fourth kill. 16 minutes in, he's legendary. Now Airwax is caught on a line. Lulex, can he serve him up? Airwax is going down. This time it's Lulex that picks him. H2K is doing everything right here, Deficio. Every single thing. And this is what they do so well. Everything? Get, get that, well, <laughs> in this case, yeah. This time around. Get that mid-game lead, and you just never give the other team a chance to respond. You keep putting pressure on multiple lanes at once. You get the dragons, you get the turrets pushed in. And if they ever walk into their own jungle, well, you're going to collapse on them. It's almost like SK Gaming. Just less focus on individual style or individual play normally and more about the teamwork for H2K because 
typically once they have these towers down, these outer turrets, they start team fighting a lot around the dragons, like we saw in game one, where they were always there, set up the dragons, Kobane will try to come in, well, they would just kill them. But because they're running Zed, in this case here, it's going to be a lot more about the split push skirmish fight. And when you have Ryu playing so well in every game today, why not? Yeah, I mean, it's... It's not a massive departure from their usual style. We've been talking about how, you know, the times that they take to win, the objectives they focus around. But this is something a little bit new from H2K. Is Ryu just playing so massive? Oh, Let's Soren. see if he can do it again. Soren is in some trouble, but he does get away for now. H2K, though, they're not letting up at all. On the hunt popped Kasing and Hyarnin looking to try to cut Soren off. At the pass, he's going to throw the charm out and dodge the hook. But Hyarnin is on the chase, the boomerang blade, the flash. Does he have enough in the tank with the auto attacks? I think he does. And he spell shields away the last attempt oh, from TP Soren. coming though from Yambak. This is Kobaning Wolf's chance to get some kills. The Unlimited is there as well. Deathmark onto Youngbuck. Are the wolves there in time? Hyarnin is certainly going down. And a nice little ping pong from Ryu gets him out of danger. Airwax chasing down Lulex now. The Wolves just trying to make some chaos here, but I feel like it's a little bit late for it. Well, only 18 oh, wait a minutes minute. in, they can keep fighting. That's true, they can. Arox has got to be careful, though. He's taking mini aggro. Lulex trying to run away. And he dashes in, but there's Unlimited. He does get the pickup on Airwax, though. They trade junglers. Need a little bit of help from Annie to do it. This uh, vibe pick is really backfired for Copenhagen Wolves. They had the chance to pick Sijuani, first rotation. Let's just see the one-on-one -on -one fight. The big Cinderhold tank against one of the old school, the Warrior Chant from Airwax. Not deciding to build pure tank himself early on. And we just see like their Cinderhold damage over time, the AoE as well from Sijuani is doing a lot of damage. If you have a long fight like this, he's just waiting for his cooldowns. Where he goes and secures the kill, and then ends up dying himself. Meanwhile, back in the Dragon Pit, H2K full control should grab number three. No sweat. 19 minutes, three dragons. It's starting to look a lot more like game one. It's looking exactly like game one right here for H2K. Things are really falling apart. The golden minutes between 15 and 22 is what they're using to take down the last few out of turrets. I mean, there's two left, so obviously now all the folks are going to be swapped to the mid and to the top lane. And this red side jungle for Copenhagen Wolves with their red buff is going to be completely warded off by H2K. There's really nothing else because there's no dragon on the bottom side. Nobody can one-on-one -on -one Ryu. Not even close. Sorn has given up on getting his hourglass because when he goes back, he doesn't have 1600 gold to get a large rod. So he's simply aiming now towards potentially avoid stuff and get a bit more power in the mid game from his damage. But this is like the, the poor man build. And not having that hourglass against the 4-0 and 3-Z just makes it impossible for you to stand against him in the one-on-one. -on -one. So Ryu is free to do whatever he wants. Odo Amna and Maokai can sit in the opposite lane and control the waves. And you got the fast pushing ability of a Sivir in the mid lane. So that's a good 1-3-1 setup from H2K. Or you just put Odo Amna, push out one wave and join the Sivir, join the Sejuani in the mid lane and have Ryu push the other one and go 1-4 where you take over the top side of the map so you have Baron pressure. And they never sit idle either. This H2K team, they're always trying to grab a little bit more on the map. You could see a moment ago when Kiarn and Kasing, they were just cruising through the jungle and grabbing every camp. They're clearing waves whenever they get the opportunity. Copenhagen Wolves, they don't have time to take a breather. And, and H2K, you know, they're intent on leaving them in the dust here. They have their eyes set on Fnatic next week. It's going to be a pretty insane game. Fnatic, obviously. I bet they're watching this one very intently, though. I think one of the only teams who's really managed to get the lead against H2K in and, the mid-game and, and then the keep it and yes. win the game. Where other teams have... Well, before Copenhagen Wolves got the one in the last game, H2K, as we said, never lost the game where they were behind at 20 minutes. We have... Uh... Never won a game yeah. where they were behind in 20 minutes. I was trying to work that one out. Yeah, I was about to say, never lost a game? Well, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, never won a game when behind in 20 H2K minutes. H2K are... That has changed now. They're roving through the... This is absolutely has. They're roving through the jungle here to try and still get a catch on. Airwax will take the edge of the boomerang blade. It, but there's so little ground that Copenhagen Wolves have to stand on. They just can't move out even into their own jungle without being punished. Ryu has been completely unchecked. As you mentioned, no one can duel with him at this point. And he's going to start pushing away at this yeah. tower. Soren's there for the defense. Still taking 
taking a little bit of damage. Airwalk's moving on to Odawamne, has the Assault and Battery down. Young Buck on his way. No helps coming for Odawamne just yet, but he does have Teleport up, and he's so tanky, he's actually turned him back, and H2K, they're completely fine with this. It's the tower yeah. in the middle to them. If this they is what happens in the 1-3-1 setup, is you're so strong, that you just force more than one guy to come. Let's see the fight in mid lane, though. Yeah, desperate attempt, though, for Copenhagen Wolves to see if they can make it happen. Yarden's gonna fall down. Lulex getting low. Unlimited, though, is getting chunked out as well. Soren helping to save the day as he moves around the side. Looks for Otawamne, flashes, manages to take him out. So that being said, they get a couple of kills there after what looks incredibly bad for them, but they've still given up a tower. H2K aren't really perturbed by that, but perhaps they were a little too far forward. A little bit too far. Rio didn't move from the bottom lane once the fight started. But this is basically again what happens in the 1-3-1 setup. When you push every lane at once, and because Copenhagen Wolves has to send two or three guys to kill someone, it will always open up a tower elsewhere on the map. And that's what HK is playing around. They got the tower, then stayed around, got caught. I think they didn't expect Jungbuck to show up, even though they had some wards in the jungle. And Rio didn't react, but I'm sure that this is a small thing for H2K at this point. They're gonna say, fine. Let's not do that again. We still have three dragons to zero. Next one is coming in about two minutes. We still have a Z who is unkillable, basically. Void stuff is now done for Soren, which will help him in the fights, but not in the split pushing against the Z at all. No, it's, it's so hard to deal with the multiple prong threat of H2K right now. And, and the best bet for the Wolves just seems to be Try to collapse on them when they overextend with inferior numbers. It's okay, however, how many times are they going to make that mistake? That's the thing. Yeah, they've got the one through one going. It's the, the three are kind of taking their time about it, but they're dragging Copenhagen Wolves around. And if they don't collapse on one of these lanes, it's going to be incredibly difficult for them to stop this continued push. And Copenhagen Wolves just picked the wrong jungle to ward off. When Dragon is spawning in about two minutes' time, you know HK is going to swap the focus on the bottom side of the map. So the walls have now completely warded up top side, but nobody's gonna go there because you are securing the dragon. You can see the wards from H2K has been placed down here. These few wards from, from them doesn't really matter anything. So the walls will not be able to fight for next dragon. That's given up completely. Only way for them would have been if they took all these wards on the top side and put down on the bottom side here near their own blue buff and then try and create a pick. Otherwise, this dragon should be gone in favor of H2K. Teleport is ready though for Youngbug. Let's see to try anything. Helix is extremely weak, though. They had some mistimed teleports, though, in the last few games. And, and last game especially was very, very tough for the Wolves in that regard. I feel like that's something that they don't want to rely on if they're not able to execute it. Ten seconds on this dragon. And there really hasn't been, there hasn't been that much movement from the Wolves to try and deny this or contest it no. in any way. What they should do is try and trade for a tower elsewhere or potentially a bound, which, when, which, oh, sorry, which will happen later in the game. But in this case here, what they're doing is honestly the correct call. You cannot fight for that dragon to get something else. Tower has now been taken from Yombok, so you get that's at least- their first tower, yeah, by the way. That's what you have to do. When you are this far behind, trade objectives. Simple, that's all you can do. This tower here is not going to do a whole lot more than damage under the tower to tier 2 1. And obviously, HK will try to fight. Youngbuck's back. And H2K have moved back. Wave building on both sides of the map in Copenhagen Wolves' favor. But H2K are pinging the one on the bottom side. The one on the top should dissipate on its own. For now, Nairwax unlimited. The rest of the Wolves, ooh, be careful, Soren. Are in the open middle here as H2K tries to bait them into an engage. There's no wards behind them that Youngbok can TP on. So they actually just walk out the base. They're not going to get the fight now. They're still trying to defend this last outer in the top side. And obviously, it's about the Baron as well. H2K, if they do manage to secure control around it, can start it fairly easily and force the wolves to come fight them. So now is really the time where you ward up your own jungle on the top side here, near that red buff. You see the wards they have in the river as well. Very hard for H2K to clear them because you don't have enough fish in denial. So wolves can hold on now. The thing is, just, is it going to be enough? Because H2K is going to have so many openings to create these kills here, start objectives. 
and then the Wolves have to go fight because it's also four drinks to zero, 27 minutes in. Yeah. This is this is the issue. The Wolves have not been able to fight over these, and you know, historically they haven't been particularly good at, at grabbing dragons when they do contest them. It, it, I guess it's about about half, but they don't usually win those fights by a lot either. And in this situation, when HK is just so much stronger, it discourages them from even trying. And now this tower under siege, the damage they're putting out on it very very quickly for only pelting it every other auto attacker. So Young Buck nearly walks into the hook. They should be able to push this one back with their numbers for now. Still very, very dangerous for the Wolves. You don't really have any great wave clear up here for them. Sorn is the main champion to clear the waves, and he's obviously in the bottom lane trying to one-on-one -on -one Odo Amne, who's happy just sitting and farming against him. So the Wolves couldn't really do a whole lot to stop it. They're going on Lulix now. Yep, Salt and Battery, but Youngbuck's running the opposite direction. Airwalks, they're going back to base, leaving him for dead, and he's going down. And now the rest of the Wolves might be in some trouble as two. Flayed back, Deathmark onto Freeze. He's popped, Ryu picks up yet another kill as Lulex should go down after this one. Unlimited is going to get picked up. Also, Youngbuck barely surviving the attack, and it is a 3-4-1 in favor of H2K. They grab one turret, they set their sights on another. Inhibitor should be no problem. Soren's gonna grab something back, but that's a consolation prize in this game. It is indeed. He's just trying to trade at least some thing. I'm not sure why they were also trying to fight there. Engage on to Lulex, the big Sejuani. And obviously completely backfired for them. 28 minutes in, Inhibitor is down. Baron is still up. Soren's still pecking at the, the sure. inner turret here. He's not going to be able to do nearly enough damage. There's minions at his back, but Ryu is incoming. The Wolves... I understand why they need to grab a little bit of gold back, but it's just they're giving up so much for it. Four dragons down now, the inhibitor is gone in the top side of the map. H2K have grabbed everything that they can, and they are shoving the wolves back in. And simply in prime position to advance from the quarterfinals here. Obviously, I have to say it's not done yet because we got CLG and no, Liquid true. playing after this. And then tomorrow, Gambit Unicorns and Gravity versus. I want to say it is Team Impulse. I might be lying to everyone. Oh, you called it. Now, whoo! Soren tries to go in and get the blue steel back off, but Ryu is going to be able to secure it nonetheless. Soren, Deathmark was popped on him, didn't do nearly enough damage as he dodges away from. The Glacial Prison, Airwalk's looking for a collapse here. Rio at half health going to be able to get back to base. Copenhagen Wolves, they want to start up this Baron. It's still very, very dangerous for them. Youngbuck's caught on a hook. They have to bail away from that. H2K starting to shove in the yeah. middle. Airwalk's there to defend, but that won't be enough. Wolves are just trying to make some plays to see if they can turn this game around. Force a bit of a Baron, potentially. Get a one-on-one -on -one kill for Soren. Now he has the Hourglass completed. They know standard 5-on-5 five five is super hard for them to win. There's a TP coming from Yumbug. He's going in now. He's going in to start this dead. one. Assault and battery on Dijana, but he's able to get away from this. Lulex is going pretty low, but Airwalks himself, he's going down. That's a double kill going over to Young Youngbuck now caught up as Lulex takes the kill credit for that one. A three for none. Lulex still staying alive. Inhibitor turret number two now being fired down. There's nothing the Wolves can do to stop this. It's only 30 minutes into this game, Deficio, and it looks like it might be over in just a few more. Yeah, they got super minutes already. More coming on the top side here. H2K. Seems like they want to play it very safe. Go towards the Baron instead. Lulex is going to return from base as well, but this should be a fairly easy Baron, unless the Wolves want to go and try and fight, but again, they got to worry about Super Minions coming. And H2K will be happy just taking another fight. There's no TP for Yamaks. He's not going to be able to join. There's no front line for and the it, Wolves. It's, it's going down way too fast here. Taking it out. The Wolves want to try to answer, but there is the empowered recall. And they get away. One Nexus turret also fell, courtesy of the Super Minions. Wolves got a rush dragon. Yeah. Like, they, that's they it. To. There's no other objective on the map. Just but get that dragon. But knows this is happening. Yeah, but you're just, you got to try and take it. Like, that's it. Just go dragon. Oh, oh, Ryu. He's got in a charm. Soren dashes forward, doesn't manage to pick him up, but gets close. Still, this is about enough time for the rest of H2K 
to make their way over to the pit. Wolves need to be able to take this one, but do they have enough damage in time? Oduwamne, he's such a huge tree here. Jumps onto Unlimited. Airwalks is in there as well, but the health bars are going way too low, and Copenhagen Wolves are starting to evaporate. Death mark on Youngbuck Unlimited still in the picture, but not for long as he gets taken out. Youngbuck fired down, said double kill, going over to Yarnin. Soren, the last hope, hits the Zanya's Hourglass, but that's only going to keep him alive for another second longer. The Super Minions firing down the last Nexus turret, and H2K with a clean fight are going for the clean sweep. They want to take out Copenhagen Wolves right here, right now, and punch their ticket to the semifinals. And it looks like they have just about done it, Deficio. Such a good performance from H2K and Rio here. Will he get the last hit on the Nexus? He's been my MVP for this quarterfinal. Oh, I think that's definitely fair. And it goes down. H2K 3-0 over the Copenhagen Wolves in our first quarterfinal. Such a nice performance here. Yeah, I mean, you can look at the entire roster now for from H2K, and I guess pretty much oh. all the members, most of them, will qualify for the MVP. Kasing looked fantastic in all these games. Odo Amnon is Maokai, still undefeated, 8-0 and zero now. This is the thing about H2K, too. They're almost more than any other team in the European LCS. They are a team, all of them, working together for the objectives, for the fights, even if you have standout performances, it can be any single one of them in any number of ways. And there they go, shaking hands with the Wolves. And that is a scary thing, Pyro, that you don't even need, let's say, Ryu to win his lane for H2K to play their style, for them to get this big mid-game lead and win games like they've done for, let's say, seven or six weeks now since Kissing joined. But when he's playing like he's doing today, Picks the Z, beats Ari in lane, roams around the map. That makes them look even better. Now we're gonna get Febivan versus Ryu in the semi-final. That's, I mean, Febivan has been, for many, one of the best mid laners in Europe this split. Dent is still smiling here. Yeah, even Boy, after a, a rough loss like that one, I mean, you, you gotta give credit to the Wolves. That they, they were very tenacious, and in game number two, they, they really pulled out all the stops. It's just, they got overpowered there. 